Hi friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com. Welcome back. <laughs> Today's video, um, I mentioned that I was going to be showing, we'll be uh, comparing the two uh, Shawson decks that I have. One that I recently received by Tarot Sheet Revival and Sullivan Hisman's with the uh, Francois Shawson that I have from Yves Renault. Um, so let's get started off with the camera. Now the packaging from each uh, publishing, publishing house, um, they're both exceptional publishers, so I, you can't go wrong no matter who you choose. Um, this one by uh, Yves Renaud came with two cards, once in, one in French, one in English, and it dates this particular publication of his as being from 1736. When you open the box, the deck itself is wrapped in the kind of paper, presumably, that um, an original deck from that period of time would have been wrapped in. Once I receive one of Eve's decks, I always take the paper wrapping and put it in the bottom, the well of the box. Um, because I don't want to have to keep unwrapping the paper every time I use it. But it comes in a very hard, hard box, you know, hard case box. The, um, the tar tarot sheet revival gives it a different date of 1672, which I'll get into and I have already spoken about a few times. Um, and you'll notice there's a difference in the name, right? The, uh, the Renault deck calls it Francois Chausson, 1736, and the Tarot Sheet Revival deck acknowledges that the original plates were created by G.S. Uh, Guillaume Esselon in 1672, but he combines the two names to give credit to both of the publishing publishers. And of course, the um, Tarot Sheet Revival deck arrives very nicely in um, beautiful, you know, a beautiful presentation. Um, and both of them will tell you the number, number deck that you have. The Tarot Sheet Revival deck also came with a few cards, um, not, not explaining anything, but um, just identifying the deck. And uh, as always, I got a few cards from other decks, which I already had all those all those decks. But it's nice to have them, especially if you want to give them away as gifts or use them as bookmarks or whatever. Now, on the left is the Tarot Sheet Revival. On the right is the Eves Renaud. They both have the same card back, um, except that the Eves Renaud is a little darker so that if you get confused between the two decks, if the front of the cards doesn't give itself away, the back at least you'll be able to tell that one is lighter than the other, but they are the same back. As far as cardstock goes, they're very similar. The Yves Renaud has a slicker feel to it. Um, and I do have an overhead light on because it's an overcast day. So you, you probably can see that the glare on the eaves is just a little more intense than the surface of the Tarot Sheet Revival deck. But the, the, as far as the feel goes, the um, Yves Renault deck feels a little more slick. This one has more of a textured, very minimal, very minimal textured feel. They both have squared corners in keeping with being historically accurate. And they're both about the same thickness. Let's see, yeah, they're both about exactly the same thickness. Let's see. Maybe the Tarot Sheet Revival deck is a smidge more thick, I don't know. But I would say pretty much the same. And as far as size goes, Tarot Sheet Revival is just a smidge larger. Now let's look at the colors. One thing, um, right from the very first card, being the full, the full card, is you'll see that it's the uh, Tarot Sheet Revival is 
kind of like a cleaner version. Now, I don't know if the um, Yves Renault deck is described as being a facsimile. This is a reproduction. So it doesn't say that it's based on, it says it's a reproduction. So I presume that that's describing a facsimile deck. Now, the interesting thing about this, if the rest of the cards in the um, Tarot Sheet Revival deck are as clean, um, it makes me wonder if in an attempt to uh, present it as the first run of 1672, which we know that the wood blocks uh, for these were, um, you know, created in 1670, uh, 1672, um, would cleaning up and making it more fresh be in keeping with how it would have looked as a first run? And by the time 1736 rolls around, when it's believed, you know, sometime around this time, that this deck was copied from, um, there would, you would, there would be an expected amount of running or bleeding or uh, imperfections from the block after, what, like 60, 70 years of using the blocks, right? So the 1672 date of the Sullivan Hismans, I'm presuming, is presenting the deck as though it were a brand new deck with brand new plates. And the 1736 being more of a facsimile deck of how the deck currently exists, and this one is based on the museum uh, in Switzerland, um, how it looks after all those years of, of running the prints. Now, I don't know if you can tell the color from, you know, my camera in my lighting, which is not great today because it is a dark day. But we have in the Sullivan Hismans a decidedly green color here. And in the Yves Renaud, it could be a, an extremely dark, like midnight green. But you can't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would describe it as green without having this to compare it to. But the colors in both decks do seem to be the same. There's some off registry coloring here that does not exist in this one So the Tarot Sheet Revival honored the color um, that we see in the Yves Renaud, you know, facsimile deck. So, and I'm sure they probably, the, the cards don't say, you know, what deck they're, they used as the original. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't say you know, what deck was used. Um, but I presume, you know, probably the same deck since they're having the same color. Look at the eyes. The eyes of the Sullivan Hisman deck are, are more present than in the later run. The later date. Ah, and I want to give acknowledgement to one of my viewers. Let me just show this first. You know, you see there's more refinement in the face in the Sullivan Hisman's Tarot Sheet Revival deck. We still have the same little smudge here, right? Or mark. Ah, that's not a smudge. That's deliberate. That's a deliberate mark. And I'm guessing, you know, um, somebody knows what that is. Perhaps it's a some kind of Hebrew glyph. I don't know. 
Um, I don't see them in any other cards so far. But I want to give a, a credit to Miss Schiff, who, after viewing my uh, demonstration reading the other day of um, what happened to my ring, which disappeared, and I did find um, one of the cards that was in it in in the spread that has thrown me since I don't I still don't know how it relate to find you know relate to the situation was justice and she indicated from what I said in the content of my video that my grandbaby baby was going to be born in October which would make him a Libra so she pointed out that justice could be an indicator that the baby would be a Libra with maybe Libra qualities so I thought that was a really good catch because I, I missed that cat I didn't pick up on that um, you know, so thank you, Miss Schiff. <laughs> and I don't know how many of you read my, you know, the comments in my videos, but in the event that you don't, I figured it was worth mentioning. So again, a clarity, right, that we don't see. So they're both really awesome. And again, we have the green, the deep, deep green. Whereas here, I don't know, in person, if I would describe this as deep green or deep blue or indigo. And we see the GS in both, which would uh, be in keeping with when Guillaume Celan would have been active with his card making and the significance of recognizing this deck as having been created in 1672 is that it's one of the earliest if not currently the earliest form of TDM 2 that we have access to. Doesn't mean it is the earliest, it's just the earliest one that we're aware of. And we can see that as evidenced in the canopy of the chariot and um, probably in the, right, in the lack of a blindfold in the, in the cupid. Now, I, you know, I don't know if the blindfold in the cupid is always an indicator of TDM2, but certainly the canopy and the moon and other cards that will probably notice as we go through, if I don't remember to say them all. Um, I'm at least mentioning it now. Oh, now look. We seem to be getting a sideway glance a little bit here. And then this one seems to be more straight on, which is interesting. But you know, the original block may, may not be um, obvious. And it's possible that each of these art deck creators just decided to f finish it in the way they understood or they believed it probably looked. Because um, no matter how faithful a reproduction something tries to be, I think there's always um, concessions they need to make or refinements maybe, unless they're just doing a straight up facsimile recreation, like Patrick Valenza, when he does a um, facsimile deck, he straight up takes photographs of it. He may have to manipulate the light on each card to bring out, you know, each card to its um, best representation, but I'm imagining that um, when other, you know, generally when card makers, you know, attempt to recreate a deck, they have to make some decisions because I think some things after 200, 300 years are kind of vague, right? We've seen, I'd like to pull some of my decks to see um, what other decks have this little turnover right in that knee spot, you know? 
maybe an Italian or maybe Swiss, you know, or maybe from Rouen or, or Besançon even, you know, how many other decks have this little thing happening around the knee area? I'll go through my decks and see if I can find any. That might be a clue. They seem to be true to one another. So I think they're both excellent representations. Um, the only maybe difference is the green that we're seeing in this. But it may be known that this was a green and in time it just became so dark we can't tell. I mentioned this when I did the showcase of this deck by itself. Remember when I get a new deck, I'll always showcase it by itself to give it, to honor it in the way it deserves to be. And then I'll usually do a side by side with another deck um, or other decks of the same period of time, even if it's not the same, you know, the same deck. And then I'll usually do a demonstration reading, which I used, I did in my showcasing video. Okay, now here we have the similarity um, that we've seen in other decks, whereby, you know, there's a slight anomaly in the hanged one. They do have the name in the correct order. They do have the hanged one suspended, presumably in the correct way. You know, you usually hang upside down. Or you can hang from your neck, but not when the rope is from the ankle, right? Um, however, we do have an anomaly with n the numbering here. And we have an unnamed death card identified only as the 13th. And I've discussed this before in other videos when we see what appears to be yellow over black. I wonder if it's an attempt to create green. You know, the early card makers attempt to make some kind of a green, um, but it doesn't seem to be occurring in this, although we do see a smidge of yellow there. And we do have green in this deck, you know. So presumably if, if the 1672 deck was able to create green, if it was intended to be green grass, I think it would have been. So I don't know. Quite a serene face in temperance. green in the wings and in the feet more of the orbs are colored in in the original or the earlier dated deck and more of the landscape is better defined in the tarot sheet revival than we have in the user a node.
Again, with the moon, we see the sideway glancing moon instead of the front moon that we would typically see in a TDM1. The crustacean is certainly better defined here. We have the green tufts of grass, and this is a lot harder to make out, even in person. I don't know if there's anything under there. And we can see markings in this one, and here too, so I don't know. And again, these dew drops or evaporation points or whatever they are, um, are all colored in in this one, whereas we don't see that in the other deck. So, you know, it, it's a hard call to decide, you know, if you only have the budget for one deck or the other, which one to choose, right? I think they're both lovely. If I, if I have to make a call on which one I'd probably use, I'd probably use um, uh, the Tarot Sheet Revival deck because I do remote readings that's my bread and butter, and it's, you know, to take, you know, I do videos, and when I, you know, create videos, I, I kind of like for the cards to be easily recognized what they are, not having too much vagueness, but when I am doing something privately or on my own, or if I'm studying cards, or if I'm doing a video studying cards, I'll tend to pick the facsimile um, to get a truer sense of how something looked. Now, of course, this facsimile would be from, you know, a date of 1736. Whereas if this is could be considered a facsimile or as close to a facsimile as we can get for a publication of 1672, I might use this one. But um, there's a time and place for, you know, decks that are restored or, you know, Re and reimagined, um, and there's a time and place for decks that are facsimiles, right? Okay, so now um, for the pips. There's some, you know, irregularity in the, whatever that's called of the sword, the hilt. I don't know if that's what it's called, but the um, end, you know. So, and that would be in keeping, even if it, I think if it were a first run, right? There would be a certain amount of unevenness in the inking. Very nicely done. Now let's take a look at this one. Again, in the first one, the colors are more consistent. I mean, it's more f filled in. These little squiggly shapes are more filled in. Same with the red filling in. Let's see, the seven is more pronounced here, right? So let's check out the folks in the court.
I think you get the gist, um, the differences between them. But for those of you who are hardcore, I'm going to go through the entire deck for you. But I think for most of you um, who just wanted to peruse the deck and to see what differences there might be, I think I've covered that pretty well already. But you never know what little pearls of discussion I might think of, at, you know, in the course of a, a video, <laughs> you know. So it's possible you'll miss something. Every now and then I do come up with a great insight toward the end of a video. So this is more of a peach than a bright yellow. Again, we see the GS on both cards for Guyang, Celan, and I'm sure my pronunciation is atrocious, so. And this is more of a deep red than a blood red. Oh, and here a decision was made to make a yellow burst in the center, which we see a little tiny bit of here. If you have a preference between these two, of course, I always love to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, any insights I wholeheartedly appreciate. Friend. Every time I say that, I think of um, young Frankenstein. He was my boyfriend. <laughs> Again, the green. And interesting color in the locks of the hair, but not on the top. No color in the wreath, consistent with both decks. consistent with both decks is cutting off the color in that corner. Here we have an overhang of a canopy and in some decks we'll see what I believe is a representation of a window. So, you know, it. No, I've never read this anywhere. No one's told me this. It's been my observation. A few videos that I've done, I've mentioned it where I wonder if the canopy um, overhang, f you know, for the Queen of Cups at some point was interpreted as a window. Or if a window <laughs> was at some point interpreted or understood as the canopy from her throne.
And I'm just gonna go through this a little more quickly. Ah, we see in the seven that there's no red in the batons. So we'll check out the other one and see what we have there, the seven. No color in the seven either. Interesting. So I don't rightly know if this deck was based on an actual run from 1672 or if um, it was reimagined how it would have looked in 1672. You see the difference that I'm saying? And I, I discussed that in the beginning because there's no information with the deck and I'm going to go. Now this orange or yellow has a little bit more of an orange look than the lemon yellow we have here and here we have you know the red that we don't see here we see it here but not around and of course now let's look at the two cards right we have the number which is suggested 1672 right that six is a little blurry right but we you know it's been restored here but with Chausson you know Francois Chausson um, if he used the original plates, it would have 1672. And perhaps he, you know, put in his name right here rather than the GS, but he allowed for the GS to appear in the other two cards we've noticed. So we have a little bit more of a, a, a deeper orange or a deeper yellow, you know, veer, veering on the orange than we do have in the Yves Renaud, which seems to be more of a lemon yellow. Very, very pretty deck. Now what I'm going to do before I sign off is I'm going to see if I can find any other hermit cards that have that little knee highlighted. And I'm, I'm just going to pull, see if I can find one. And the first deck I pulled to check is the uh, Payenne, um, Jean Payenne of 1743, created in Avignon. This recreation is by Marco Benedetti. We see it. We see that right here. I'll pull a couple more and just see, you know, um, 
if we see this again, this is like a little, it's a minor thing, but um, I don't know. I mean, was this copied from the Shasin from 1672? Certainly this is, bef uh, you know, or, or from the 1736. Or, um, yeah, I, I, let me look at, let me see if I can find other decks on a whim. I'm just randomly pulling decks that I have a hunch might have this kind of thing. So I'm, I'm, I was just lucky that the first deck I pulled has it. We do see it in the 1709 Pierre Madigny. which you see is also a type two TDM. I checked the Viaville, it's not in there. Um, and if we check the Peterson Noble, um, although we do have that shape and that form, and this is, I believe, a, a pretty true facsimile, it's not high lit, right? It's not in yellow but we do have the form there. The fold is in this card of noble. And I'll go crazy if I try to pull every deck in my collection. But here is the 1718 Harry, Francois Harry, and we don't have the, the light color there. You know, we do have the suggestion of a fold, but it's quite different. So it's not the same. And this is also type two. All right, friends, well, ah, now let me think. Let me go back to the, let me go back to one of the decks I showed. So now I don't know which ones I just showed because I'm going through my, I'm pausing and I'm going through my decks. But if we see the 1713 Jean-Pierre Payen, which is a type one TDM, and we look at the Hermit, we see it, and this is in a type one. So if, if the 1672 deck came first, obviously, um, I wonder how many other decks, you know, it influenced. Or maybe I'm making something out of nothing. I don't remember if I showed this one. The Matinee 1709. We see it here. And this is a TDM2. I'm sure it was a TDM2. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to pull out every card in my, every deck that I have. But I just wanted to uh, just make a little effort. See, now if you had bailed out on me or soon... You might have missed that, you know, and I gave you kind of, kind of food for thought there, <laughs> I hope. Until next, till next time, friends. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you being here. Peace and stay well.